Okay, we are finally back ah. on this uh, U.S. Army 1952 three-quarter ton 4x4 M37 cargo carrier. And I hear a little feet behind me. Oh, there he is. Hi, Chops. Hey, you want to come up here? Okay, come on. And uh, yes, we have been working on this thing, but not as much as you would think because I've got stuff to do outside. Got to put my irrigation system back in or the valve back in, make sure everything works there so I don't have a dead lawn. And, uh, or dead lawns, I should say. Uh, but what's happened with this is yesterday I had to flush the fuel line out. Disconnected it from the uh, the main going to the uh, the tank. Shut the valve off to the tank, so the tank is no longer being used on this thing. Um, what was happening was, even though I had emptied that tank out pretty much, it still had all kinds of crud in it anyway. Although the fuel filters, both of them. Uh, they just were changing color. They didn't really have any solid stuff in them. Um, but still, wasn't working too well. So, uh, and the carburetor problem, I had to pull a carburetor. I had to pull spark plugs. Uh, I had at least uh, two of the cylinders pumping oil. So, rings are probably bad in two of them. Uh, but since this is not going to be run all the time, eh, that's not a big concern right now. Um, but uh, the main thing was getting it to run right. And uh, so, ended up to flush the system out, ended up using a can of acetone first, and ran that through the electric fuel pump, through the fuel line, all the way. Kept running that through to make sure it was cleaned out. Wait, let me get off. Oh, there he goes. Uh, so, did that, got cleaned up, uh, ran gas through it, gas was fine. Um, it finally was totally clear when we came through, so it was fine. So, we know the line is perfectly clean all the way through. Uh, I have to use an external gas tank on this thing. Uh, I'm not going to use the original one. Uh, I'll have to, eventually, I'll have to drop this tank, either get rid of it or clean it out or something. I don't know what yet. Um, but to clean it out actually is more expensive than buying another tank. I, I found out a, a tank for a, a Chevy S10 truck would actually work in this, actually fits. So, and they are that not that expensive, only about 120 bucks or so. so. Not bad, and uh, in fact, I think Summit Racing has them over there even, so not a hard thing to find even. So, anyway, before that, we're going to make sure I get everything back on, but I'll show you also what's happened. Since Ron was pretty much laid up, uh, and he couldn't really do a whole lot, so what did he do? Uh, he started rebuilding carburetors. <laughs> Not just one. Uh, if you notice, there are three carburetors there. Okay? Um, he actually bought one. It would be this one here. Because if you look at it, look what it still has. That twisted wire going through the... the the screw there is still, it's all original. It's never been, this thing's never been open until he opened it. But, uh, so, what happened was, he took them apart. I put them in my ultrasonic cleaner, used pine saw on it. And yes, pine saw is, actually works the best. It has, uh, <coughs> it has, actually, pine saw has got an acid in it, actually. Uh, not real caustic, but good enough to clean off all the parts. 
Uh, as you see here, it's not all rusted up and dirty like it was before. It's all, all clean. Uh, before, let's see. That's what it looked like. It's all pretty much pretty dirty, all messed up. <laughs> this is actually a fourth carburetor. These two carburetors were the original civilian ones the guy had put on it. And uh, then I bought the other uh, military one here for $257. Ron picked this one up for $149. And uh, we got gasket kits and rebuild kits for everything. So basically all that's been done. And uh, so him being laid up has actually been helping out with this project quite a bit. Uh, so I have good carburetor to put in. If that wasn't enough, oil pressure gauge, it didn't work. He has gone ahead and figured out how to open these things and rebuild it. So not only one, not only two, but three of them. Okay, well, anyway, I got interrupted by a phone call. But uh, anyhow, yeah, so those are done. I have an option of either going with 60 pound per, per square inch uh, gauges or the... <clears throat> 120 pound gauge so I have two that are 60 and one 120 so anyway uh, but they all work so we'll find that out and then I did clean all the spark plugs and there they are there and they did come out really clean I mean I mean they came out like brand new I ran them through my ultrasonic cleaner, uh, and then I used my little uh, little needle needle pick here to clean the top of the the electrodes. But uh, so that's okay. Now let's see. Uh, oh, I know. I'm gonna show you what this acetone looks like. Give you an idea how messed up. Save the acetone, but that's what was in the, the lines. That's why that's why it was not running as good as it should have. That's what it was pumping through the, the system. So yeah. Uh, not real good. So, anyway, so yeah, that was part of the problem. And, uh, take a look here someplace. Well, that's the fuel line coming out of the tank and the fuel pump. So, anyway, what we have here is, whoop, this guy. That's what was going in and we were pumping it through to the front. So, anyway... So that's what's been happening with that, and then uh, we'll take care of some other stuff. But uh, yeah, it's fun trying to get all this stuff done on this thing. But oh well, it's a project, what can I say? That's going to be it for now. Talk to you guys later.